more than ever before in human history, we share a common destiny. We can master it only if we face it together. And that, my friends, is why we have the United Nations. A very warm namaskar and a heartfelt welcome to all of you. On behalf of Modi Institute, I extend a kind welcome to our esteemed chief guest, Dr. Amitav Mukherjee. I extend a gracious welcome to the President Modi University, Dr. Suresh Advani, our dear ma'am principal, Mrs. Meeta Sharma, and other distinguished dignitaries. And of course, a very cheerful welcome to the entire gathering present over here. It's a proud privilege for me to welcome our esteemed chief guest, Dr. Amitav Mukherjee. Dr. Mukherjee is presently the executive director of Development Tracks RTC, a knowledge enterprise in Delhi. He was the senior expert for macroeconomic policy and development divisions at the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and the Pacific. He has an exceptional capability of carrying out applied research and tr transferring the same into actions and policies. He has, set, he has been instrumental in setting up of several institutions. He set up Praxis, being, being its first secretary, the internationally recognized institute for participatory research in Patna, which is doing pioneering work in fostering participatory development. The Commonwealth Award was presented to him in 1993, which has enabled him to study, research, and lecture extensively in different parts of the world. Moreover, he was made an honorary citizen of the Huian County in China in recognition for his services for rural development. Dr. Mukherjee is a life member of several professional bodies, including the Royal Economic Society London and the Indian Econometric Society. Sir, we are privileged to be graced by your prestigious presence. I welcome you with the highest respect and honor. As is our tradition, I request our dear ma'am principal, along with Dr. Advani, to kindly escort our chief guest for the auspicious lighting of the lamp. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. You may take your seat. Now I request the Koi girls to present a beautiful rendition of the traditional institute song, which marks the beginning of every event that the school partakes. I request everyone to rise and sing along with the choir. Nirmano ke pavan yuga 
Modi School Model United Nations 2017. Model United Nations, as you all know, is an academic simulation of the United Nations that aims to educate participants about current events, topics in international relations, diplomacy, and the United Nations agenda. The participants role play as diplomats representing a nation, or NGO in a simulated session of a committee of the United Nations. With its first ever Model UN Conference, MSMUN 2017 is based on the thematic agenda where technology meets diplomacy, and hence we get technomacy. Six committees are being simulated, which will address a range of agendas from various disciplines. Before we go any further, I invite Ms. Amrita Singh, cultural head, to sing a melody for you all. There's a hero If you look into your heart You don't have to be afraid Of what you are There's an answer If you reach into your soul And the sorrow that you know Will melt away, yeah, yeah. And then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on, and you cast your fears aside, and you know you can survive. And if you feel like hope is gone, look inside you and be strong. And you finally see the truth that a hero lies in you.
without any further ado, I call upon the girls for a wonderful dance performance before you all. Please give a huge round of applause. Take it or leave it, baby, take it or leave it But I know you won't leave it, cause I know that you need it mm. Look in the mirror, but now look in the mirror Baby, I see it clear, why you wanna be near mm. I'm not surprised, I sympathize I can't deny your appetite you got a fetish for my love I'll push you out and you come right back I'll see your point in pain I know that dress is coming If you regret You got me thinking about when you were mine And now I'm all up on you What you expect But you're not coming home with me tonight Well, thank you for that wonderful performance. May I now request our revered chief guest, Dr. Amitav Mukherjee, to address the gathering and pass on his words of wisdom to us.
Namaskar to all of you. I am delighted to be here this morning to speak to you at the inauguration of your model United Nations. Having served the institution for 15 years, I always feel a great pride in having served an institution which has served mankind so well. It is not a perfect institution. It has a lot of defects, but there are certain salient features of the institution which are eternal, Sashwat, right? If I would take you through some of the things that I think are critical for your deliberation for the next few days. But before I do so, I thank Madam Principal, thank the President, sir, and President, thank all of you for having come here to suffer another inflection of a lecture. You know, there was a movie when we were kids called Upkar, where Pran had a very beautiful dialogue, I still remember it. Rashan par bhashan hai, bhashan par koi rashan nahi hai. So I have, I have liberty of talking to you whatever I want to talk. First of all, how do I operate this one? So I can operate from here? Huh? Okay, okay, all right. See, so you must understand there's a lot of criticism over the UN started as a club in 1945 basically motivated by an American president, Roosevelt. So that was 24 October 1945 in San Francisco. I will take you through the next. This is the UN building in New York. Why I showed the building? I will take you through different parts of the building and what's written there. They are the values that sustain mankind. They are the values that are very dear to my heart and should be very dear to your heart to take you through the life journey. Remember, you have only one chance to live this life. Live it well. How you can live your life well when you have your values right. I, nothing matters. Whether you fail, you succeed, you become the prime minister, or president, or get the Nobel Prize, all that matters is, will be the values that you have imbibed and the values that you have passed on to others. Now, this is an institution, first of all, it is a democratic institution. There is no other institution in the world where one vote, one nation counts. Even Benin, which is a small nation, has the same vote as the United, Na United States. If Sierra Leone, a small African nation, has the same weight as the United Kingdom on Russia or China. Equality for law is one of the basic tenets of the United Nations. And I hope as, as members of a democratic country, all of us will recognize that each vote counts. My vote is as important as your vote, and your vote is as important as the vote of the Safai Karmachari who are not working. And you have done a wonderful job of keeping your campus so clean, brilliant. Next. So the UN adopted a, UN is governed by a charter, like a, we have the constitution, he has a charter. And the charter has certain very important things which I want to point out. Next. See, the, 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 the charter is long, I've just extracted parts of it to give you the first place says, the, the, the peoples of the United Nations are determined. This is the resolution. 
to reaffirm faith in the fundamental human rights. We all have rights as human beings. For instance, recently you had the Supreme Court decision on right to privacy. It is not enshrined in the Constitution, but it is a right available to me as a human being. The Supreme Court said that the red right to privacy is part of the right to life. Then it says the dignity and the worth of a person. Whatever I am, my worth is not whether I am a principal of a college, president of a university, chief technical advisor of the UN, secretary general of the UN, but my worth is as a human being. That's my worth. I must be treated like that. No, back, khatam nahi hua hai. And men and women have equal rights. I spoke in the morning to the students. We often in our society do not recognize that. Your rights, men's rights and women's rights are the same. And to me, it's, it's more important to have the women's right up front. And I will tell you when you ask me a question, not now. Next. Now, this is what we have determined. Then what do we will do? We'll practice tolerance and live together in peace with one another as good neighbors. That is the key to human existence. I must have tolerance towards my fellow student. I must have tolerance towards the fellow school. I must have tolerance to a fellow university. I must have tolerance to a fellow community. I must have tolerance to a fellow state. I must have tolerance for a fellow language. I speak different language. I speak Bengali. But I have tolerance for those who speak Marathi or those who speak Tamil. I have tolerance for a country who is a neighbor. I must have tolerance for another planet. Tolerance, that's the basic thing. And then only having tolerance, for, these are all temporal things. You also want material things. Life will not, you won't be successful if you don't have material things. And what are the material things? Will promote economic and social advancement. Economics is fine. We'll have GDP growth rates, 5%, 10%, 20%. But there must be social advancement also. People must have good health. People must have good education. People must have good entertainment. I'm sure you will all be playing. We must all be studying. I always tell students when they say, are you playing hard? So that, that's what, what, what you, you need. That's one thing that I, when I, I worked, uh, my charge was at one time was North Korea. I always admired that country. It has many faults. But one of the very basic things which I liked is everybody had access to health care. Everybody had access to education. I sat in a clinic in Pyongyang to see what the doctor does. There are 10 bottles there, different colors. Whenever a patient comes, he gives medicine from one of those 10 bottles. I was quite intrigued what is happening. I asked the doctor at the end. He asked me, you do have a question? I said, yes. You give medicines from the 10 bottles, whoever comes. He said, go and check the prescription that a doctor gives you in Delhi. He also prescribes only five or six medicines. They are same, same broad spectrum antibiotics having different brand names, but the basic salt is the same. I admire them. Every child goes to a school. They, okay, they don't have liberties. They don't have a lot of the freedom that we have, but these two things they have ensured. Everybody has a house. Everybody has education. Everybody has health care, which is not a small thing to do. Next. So this is a Persian, a great Persian poet. His name was Sadi. He wrote a, a poem called Bani Adam. This is, it is, this was, this is, this clock is in the main doorway of the United Nations. Next. And what he says, the sons of Adam are limbs of each other, having been created in one essence. When the calamity of time affects one limb, the other limbs cannot remain at rest. We are all interlinked. 
if I am not well, you will be unwell. That's what our scriptures also say, bahu jana sakhaya, bahu jana hitaya, sukhana bhavati. If, if, if you live in, uh, in an island where everybody around you are unhappy, you will be unhappy. Happiness cannot be in isolation. If you have all happy people around you, you will feel happy. Go to a mela, you feel happy automatically. Because there are happy people, some eating, some dancing, some on the jula, some showing cinema. So that's why. And then if you have no sympathy for the troubles of others, you are unworthy to be called a name of human. If somebody is in distress, you must be distressed. You must be sympathized. Because you don't know. Tomorrow you may suffer from the same malady. You can suffer the same consequence. Next. Next. This, there is a rhythming uh, tr translation of this also. I am not going through this because you will take, take a lot of time. Next one. Next. This is written, this is Isaiah's written in one of the walls. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And this is translated into a statue. Next. This is by Zurab Seretelli. He, he was a German, I mean, he was a Georgian Russian architect, he made this statue. It's in the United Nations, depicting the victory of, e of good over evil. So if you have a sword, make it, make it a plow. Don't use it as a sword. Use the iron for good purpose. Make it as a hook to bring down fruits, not to kill people. These are the, so the essence of the UN, which we all should imbibe. Next. Then there, there are, these are values which are the, uh, basic to our life, as I said in the beginning. Next. I'm sure you know this man, right? He's a very difficult person to, I, I have great respect for Kasturba because she was wife of Gandhi. I've been a husband of a person who, is, who, who also stuck to values greatly. It's very difficult to deal with. Gandhi was absolutely non-compromising. Non so what he said, he gave, gave a very, he must read, the, he must read it many times. Whenever you are in doubt, apply the following test. Recall the face of the poorest and the weakest man whom you may have seen and ask yourself if the step you contemplate is going to have any use to him. Then you will find your doubts and your self melting away. So when you have values, what are values then? Next. Values are like the compass. If you are doing something and if you are in doubt, always check with your values. Does it conform to your values? In the UN, whenever you have a resolution, this always the question is asked, does it conform to the charter? That means, does it conform to the values of the United Nations? Next. What are values then? Values are belief that you put in practice. It's very difficult to define. And the president and the principal will have to call me again to talk you, talk to you of what is value and how we define value. Very difficult to say. Is for instance, you say honesty is a value. No, what does it mean in operational terms? Truthfulness is a value. What does it mean in operational time? Very difficult to figure out. We'll do that sometime. Next. Values give you the identity, who you are. If you see a policeman, constable, what is your identity? Identity is what you, how you are perceived by others. You immediately think, Are 
is garbar karne wala aadmi ho gaya if you see a doctor you immediately think oh he is one who will take care of my pains he will see a judge his value is to judge so he will say okay he will give justice the values give him the identity similarly your identity is also given by what values you hold he is a honest person he is a dishonest i am not naming people you have if you open the newspapers you will have lot plenty of them one of them is the news for last several days you know all the channels and newspapers you know right so values give you the identity next values also give you the vision if you have no values you have no vision vision is your dream next can you recognize people in this picture can you no this is kasturba yes this is tagore this is this is indira gandhi this is you won't know him he's amartya sen's father kiti mohan sen he was professor there so what is common in them there is one thing common apart from being indians what's common in them sorry you didn't have good breakfast they had values right there is one more thing that is common in them because they had the values they have they had a vision the value was freedom that's what they valued freedom of human mind freedom of the soul freedom of the nation that's why the vision was of a free india that's what distinguishes them from everybody else next do you recognize this man john f kennedy you know he he, he also had a vision what was his vision he went to the american congress and said i want about seven, those days 15 16, 16 billion dollars american says, congress asked him man are you mad he said no i have a dream he would humphrey asked him you have a dream you want 17 billion dollars for a for a dream he said yes next we'll put a man on the moon and bring him back at the end of the decade that was his dream look at the dream our netas will say we'll put a man on the moon and forget him kaam ho gaya jaan mein mein jaye he said no that is the value value of human life we'll put a man on the moon and bring him back what happened next day next all the newspapers at the first headline will put a man on the moon we choose to go to the moon jfk shoots for the moon every newspaper in us and the american people on every full moon day used to look at the moon has somebody landed have you ever looked at the moon have you these days people don't we used to look at the moon and i always thought there's a rabbit in the moon and as a kid when we used to sleep outside in summer i always used to look at the moon the when will the rabbit move some some time it will move it never moved so the american people started looking at the moon pahuncha kya koi that means what his dream was based on value there were the whole people dreamt about it the whole country dreamt about it and what happened ne kennedy was assassinated 
He said that in 1962, see, in 62 he assassinated. But still they put the man on the moon. Next. This is Neil Armstrong. And what did he say? Remember his famous quote? No? Uh, sorry? One small step for a man is a giant leap for humanity. This one, Neil, that's the, a small step for a person. Your small step can be a huge step for the, for the nation. Who knows? Never be afraid to take this step. This is a step in the unknown. Nobody went to the moon before that. You never knew what will be in the moon. There will be rhinoceros or snakes or whatever, or volcanoes. You never knew, but still he went there. Next, that was what? Next day, everywhere in the UN, in the US, this one. Man, men walk on moon, man on the moon. That's the power of a dream based on a value system. Next. Thus, a vision is a preferred future, desirable state. You should all have a vision. The UN had a vision, it's a war-free world. UN has not succeeded. You know, you must have, had, must have read that the UN, the secretariat is the UN secretariat, and there are many funds and programs. You saw the UNICEF movie that deals with children. You have food and agriculture organization, it deals with food. You have UNDP, which deals with development. You have UNIFEM, or now it's the women UN, it deals with women's issues. You have UNEP, United Nations Environment Program, which deals with environment. There are many funds and programs. Why? The UN experimented. When a secretary could not do one thing, it started another program and gave it an independence so that it can move forward. You have a U Human Rights Commission. The UN first began with the Secretariat and the International Court of Justice in The Hague. Later on, all the funds and programs were added to take the vision of the United Nations forward. There was a lot of self-introspection. You should also be doing self-introspection to see where have you gone wrong? Where are we not working well? And try to rectify it. Your impulse should not be the philosopher's knowledge for the sake of knowledge. Your impulse should be of the philosopher, of the, of the physiologist's knowledge for the sake of healing that knowledge may help to bring. That's what the UN even tells you. Next. Then you must have a mission also. Even as a vision and a mission. You must do something. It's a vision of a great place but also must have something that you will do within that. Watch, next. Next. Your vision must be, must have a winning idea. There's no use having a vision which has no winning idea, right? That a winning idea that will make you different from others. My mission is to work with the poor people. Is different that differ that makes me a different person than other academicians. That should be your mission. Next, you see Bill Gates. He has a vision. Vision: there will be a personal computer on every desk running Microsoft software. He had that vision. That's why Microsoft is such a big company. A vision you may not reach it. It's a dream, but you still must dream. It must be very high. Next. This is the mission of, uh, this is the mission, not vision, of Oprah Winfrey. I thought it very inspiring to be a teacher and to be known for inspiring my students to be more than they thought they could be. That's what brings this student out. You should, that's his mission. Next. Look at the mission of Sir Richard Branson. To have fun in my journey through life and learn from my mistakes. You constantly experiment. 
make mistakes, enjoy, move forward. Next, what should you do? Create the highest, grandest vision possible for your life. Because you become what you believe. I said that to the girls, the girls this morning. Have the best vision you want to do. If you want to be a Safai Karmachari, you will be a Safai Karmachari. If you want to be the Prime Minister of the country and strive for it, who knows? You can be the Prime Minister of a country one day. So, dream for the best, dream for the highest, you may not get it, so what? Everybody fails in life. There is nobody who has not failed in life. Is it better to have tried and failed not than not to have tried at all? Next, this is a quote from Theodore Roosevelt. He was the 26th president of the UN. I, I thought it was very, very inspiring. Far better is it to dare, is it to dare mighty things, to try to do mighty things, to win glorious triumphs, even though checkered by failure. You do a lot of things, you will fail also, don't worry. Then to rank with those poor spirits who neither enjoy much nor suffer much. I said that this description of a kabutar in the morning. Because they live in a great twilight that knows not victory nor defeat. Try big things, fail. Like I, I gave the example, I often give the example of a kabutar and a baj. A falcon and a, and a pigeon. The falcon attacks, tries to achieve high, flies high. It gets hurt in the process also. But it flies high. It gets what it wants. A, a pigeon kabutar, kabutar khana mi rata hai. He doesn't try big things. He doesn't get big things also. It gets only a little bit of rice or whatever grains it gets. Be a falcon. Attack. Attack big things. Try to do big things. Failure will be part of life. You know, if you look at the, that is what uh, my boss at one time, Kofi Annan, Secretary General, used to tell me, that the history of man's march from barbarianism to civilization is the history of failure and success. Where failure too often abounds, abounds, success is a rarer phenomenon. Have you heard the story of Alexander Fleming? He discovered the penicillin. All his life he experimented to discover the penicillin. He failed, failed, failed. One day he suddenly saw that the, that the fungus on his copper plate had destroyed all the bacteria. That, that, that led to the discovery of penicillin and saving of millions of lives. But if he had given up hope by series of failures, he would never have discovered the penicillin and never have saved us, all our antibiotics. Thank you. Enjoy your UN session. Be baj. Be aggressive. <laughs> Attain high. Thank you. And I will be happy to answer that. Any question? I, ask me easy question. Don't ask me difficult question. Difficult question should be for the class. Any question? No? Uh, yes. My experience? Oh, my experience was great. Absolutely fantastic. Inspiration. See, I was not inspired to join the United Nations. I got the chance to work in the United Nations. I grabbed it. So that's one lesson. Opportunities come only once. When the opportunities come, grab it. Don't let it go. Kal hoga, parsu hoga, agle baar dekh lenge. Wo kabutar wala kahani hai. Agle baar kabhi nahi aata hai. 
जो आगे हमें पकड़ लो फाल्कन अटैक्स इंसेक्ट इट डजेंट लेट इट गो इट अटैक इट इन ग्रैब इट विल अटैक सीन अ फाल्कन ऑपरेटिंग इट डाइज फ्रॉम द टॉप इन अ रिवर टक इट विल गेट अ फिश एन स्वॉप सो इट्स एन अपॉर्चुनिटी आई गॉट एंड आई ग्रैब इट आई विल टेल यू व्हाट द आई यूज्ड टू वर्क एज एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर ऑफ एक्शन इन इंडिया एंड चाइना एंड आई वाज वन ऑफ द फ्यू फ्यू पीपल देन वर वर्किंग ऑन एचआईवी एंड एड्स nobody worked on that because we did not have the vocabulary people thought ye sab nahi baat chit karna chahiye we always think indians na humko nahi hoga aur sab ko hoga baki baki log mare humko kuch nahi hoga nothing will happen to me but i started that work then un in 2000 said uh, 1999 that they will celebrate the year of hiv and aids and a document had to be prepared so they advertised for the post and there were very few people who had ground understanding of it i applied for it i got it that's also another thing of the un system without pervi you can get into a job but you must be fully prepared for it anything any you ask me a question right yes ma'am namaskar namaskar take the microphone uh, sir what was your vision of life my vision of life very nice see my vision changed sit down have a, have a, have a seat my first vision was i will be a lawyer my father was advocate general and a very strong personality if you go to my website you will find his picture very well dressed always well dressed always I was very inspired by him. Very honest. When he was not advocate general, after he finished his term, clients will come to me. He was basically a criminal lawyer. Some of you will become criminal lawyers. A, 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 a criminal lawyer will a, a, a criminal who was who was sentenced to death. I still remember the name of the person. Poor and Sundi. He came to my father for appeal to the high court. He told him that Fansi shoot jaga. लेकिन काला पानी होगा दैट मीन यू विल हैव लाइफ इंप्रिजनमेंट दैट प्रोफेशनल ऑनेस्टी दैट नो यू विल नॉट गेट एनी एक्विटल यू विल नॉट गेट अ क्लीन चीट यू विल गो टू जेल फॉर लाइफ बट योर डेथ पेनल्टी विल बी सो दैट वाज माय विजन देन ही डाइड वेरी अर्ली आई व्हेन वी वर आई वाज किड राइट देन आई हैड अ टीचर ही वाज लेम एंड ही यूज्ड टू वॉक टू द स्कूल एवरी डे i was inspired by him and he raised his family that even in the face of severe physical disability he continued to live the life of a com of a, of a normal person very inspiring actually he gave my name also i went to the school the, the principal said no my name is tapan mukherjee he said no tapan mukherjee cannot be admitted those days uh, you cannot have two people with the same name we have already admitted a person as tapan mukherjee so he changed his name so he thought my brother's name was abhijit he said all oh, so this amitabh likh do bas amitabh ho gaya abhi if, if a teacher does does that parents will kill him kitna nakhda hai naam likhane mein abhi hai na jantar dekhenge ye karenge wo karenge to usme that 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 was my dream then i wanted to become a, a railway station guard you know we used to go from hazari bag to calcutta by a night dune express and the small station in deep forest this guard would show the, the the green lantern it inspired me how dedicated this man is he's there in winter summer rain in that isolated place he lives his life and every train goes he shows the lantern nobody is there to supervise him his sheer dedication that was what happened that was my vision then then finally when i passed out of the university i tried for then the limited we options were limited i am a young man of 70 right so you imagine when i In my 
old days, I was our options were very limited. Either you get into civil services or you get into banks. So I joined banks as a probationary officer. That brought me in touch with the poor people because that was the day of the early 70s, <coughs> sorry, of mass banking. How, so my vision was of a poverty-free India. That's what I should be. It's a great failure of our generation. I thought that when I will retire, we will see a country full of prosperity. And I'm starting my service. I'm starting a country full of poverty. But it is my great regret, my regret and regret of my generation, that now when we are at the sunset years, in few years' time I will be gone, the country is still into poverty, still suffers from deprivation, still suffers from so much, so much of malady. My vision has not come true. Did I answer you? Any more questions? Yes, come. Very simple. I, how I dealt with the Taliban was also again motivated by my urge to serve the poor. I didn't say Taliban by this time. Afghanistan. My last charge was Afghanistan, North Korea, and Myanmar. So I was telling you, I have met the Taliban also. I will tell you that story a little later. I was in a place called Varsaj, is in northern Afghanistan, bordering Tajikistan. There is a curfew at 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, you must return to your headquarters. But that day, you know, I am sort of a person who doesn't go by the deadlines. I have finished my job. For instance, I'm here. I don't know how much time I have, to, I have, but still I'm talking to you. So I was late. It was already 5 o'clock. So you, the drivers will not drive on the road. Road means what? A passage cut out of the hill. On the left, you have 400 feet of sheer rock. And on the right, you have 300 feet of fall. And there's this river flowing. You can, it's like a ribbon. There's nothing in between. So the driver will not go so more out of compulsion than the assurance of the, of the Afghan people. They said, they told my interpreter, they asked him to stay. We'll protect him by our blood. Nothing to worry. Memane. I stayed at night. I am a diabetic patient. So at night, I have to go out. I, when I opened my door in the hut, I found eight people. It was minus two degrees with the, that cloak and gun protecting me, saying, and telling me, Muskil nahi. Muskil nahi is no problem. You go to the toilet. There is no toilet there. You have to go in the open. So that's there. In a place called Kandahar, there is no it's desert. There is no road, per se. I was on a UN assignment, uh, so I went there. The driver lost his way. There is no road. You drive through the sand dunes, like your the desert in Bar Mehra. At, it was night. He lost his way, and there was a tire puncture. He, was, he had to come down. It was hot. I also came down, came out of the car. And in the car, I had a bag where I had a copy of my passport. You have to carry, carry a copy of your passport all the time. Somebody, he, when he, while he was fixing the tire, somebody came. In the desert also, you have thieves. They stole my bag. When I entered the car, it was a, a jeep, I saw my bag is missing. It was horrifying because I have no identity. I have to get back to Kabul because my passport was in the UN office in Kabul. I have to get back. And lo and behold, we, we were caught by the Taliban, actual Taliban. They call unauthorized check posts. They don't say Taliban. There are two kinds of Taliban. One they call the Kandahari Taliban. The other is Pakistani Taliban. They hate the Pakistani Taliban, but they, they're not that hateful of the Kandahari. So the man asked, he asked me whether I'm a Hindu, through the interpreter, whether I'm a Hindu or a, they call it Hindu, whether I'm from Hindu. I am in Pakistan. He said, no, no, he's from India. So he said, OK, after some con conversation. He asked me whether I knew Shah Rukh Khan. 
whether Shahrukh Khan is my friend. Now I thought for a second, if I say Shahrukh Khan is my friend, and if this guy is a friend, he will shoot me straight. There are eight people, ten people with AK-47. Then I thought that Shahrukh Khan will not come here. Because it will give him so, such a bad publicity and because it's a high profile, everybody would know. I don't know Shahrukh Khan came here. So I, in a fraction of a second, I took a decision to tell him the lie. Jat dua satam dua nat dua satam apriyam. Satya apriyam ne sabhi nahi bolna chahi. Wo bolna hi tha, satya bol nahi bolte tha, muskil tha, apriyo hota. Mai bola ki yes, I am his friend. He shook my hand, this is go. Took my hand, and jai. Somebody said you write that uh, in Facebook or just. It, I said no, I don't want to endanger Shahrukh Khan's life. If I say that, there are other people who will fall up, fall behind him. So that's my experience. My experience in Afghanistan has been very, very positive. I was telling them this. What is the magazine which interviewed me? They were, I was telling a story. I was there in a place called, in, in Fakar. I was in a school. School means broken. This is not school like you. Your school is a broken school, a mud house, thatched roof. Suddenly a man came. He was twice my size with four people guarding him. And he said, who are you? My interpret, through interpreter, I told him who I am and why I have come. He said, come with me alone. Went, he took me to a masjid, one door and one window. I said, get in and sit down here. And he left with two guards, and two guards were guarding my door. I thought, kya karu? There is no way. If I run out, I will be shot dead in a minute. Even if I am not shot, shot dead, I can't run because you have to walk 10 miles, 20 miles to get a donkey. Donkey is the main mo mode of transportation there. And I never traveled on a donkey. You know why? If you fall down from the donkey, donkey never looks back. It will walk on. <laughs> I always traveled either walked or on horses. If you fall down from a horseback, the horse will never move. Or if it moves, he will go and bring people. Anyway, so I couldn't. I was waiting. He came back after 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I was sweating. Somebody told my mother in Janampatri that I will die in a foreign land. I thought, this is the time has come. I went through a short prayer. This man came. And then he scolded all the villagers that he's a mehman. You should have brought him to the best place instead of making him sit in the dilapidated school building. Then he told me that this is time for namaz. So I will, I will have the namaz. If you want to pray, you pray. After the namaz was over, he called a man and said, he's a Hindu. He doesn't eat beef. He doesn't eat ghost. What, what meat, I don't know. So you go and bring eggs for him. The man traveled five kilometers to get me eggs. But they, they walk very fast also, you know, because they're skilled walkers. Came back after one hour. And then when we were eating together, he ordered everyone, don't touch his plate because they don't eat from the same plate, but they do. We often hear bad things about Islam, but there is a human face to Islam also. You know, the mullahs and babas and sadhus have got disrepute religion all over the world. So that is my experience of working with the Taliban. If you want to listen to me, I will. I can. I worked in Afghanistan fairly long. I will give you stories for three days, constant day and night. You will lose patience. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Can you have the microphone, please? Who has the microphone? No. Yeah, shout out. Very good question. That's a very, very big, very good question. Yeah. See, that five countries dominating is only in the Security Council. The UN has many organs. The Security Council 
is the only place where the five, peop five countries have a veto power. Why? They are the ones who founded this. That I showed you, it's a club in 42. The China, UK, uh, United States, and England, Germany. No, Germany is not France. France. It is only in the Security Council. In the General Assembly, nobody has the veto power. It's by majority vote. Then in the funds and programs also, there is no, no veto power. It's one nation, one vote. But as I again, I, as I said, it's the best institution, but not perfect. One of my teachers, I spoke about him in the morning, Kenneth Arrow, if you study economics, you will hear his name, read about him. Arrow got the Nobel Prize and five of his students got the Nobel Prize. So he, when I was part leaving, he told me, I said, Ken, any last minute advice? He gave me four, ad five, four advices. He said, first, never try to climb a wall which is leaning towards you. A wall which is leaning towards you, you cannot climb. So don't try impossible things. Second, he said, I can't say that, but I will say, he said, don't try to work with people who are not willing to partner with you. Let it go. Third, he said, buy the best possible bed. You spend half your life in bed. You spend so much time building a house, then you sleep on the, your grandfather's or forefather's, great grandfather's squeaking bed. Don't do that. Buy the best possible bed. And then fourth, he said, never try for perfection. Always try for excellence. So the UN is not a perfect body, but excellent body. Right? You are imperfect. Why he said that, I will tell you. You can be improved, but when you improve, still it will be imperfect. Nature, world, he said that God has made everything imperfect. There is nothing perfect in nature. Right? You are imperfect, I am imperfect, the sea is imperfect, the Himalayan mountain is imperfect, India is imperfect, USA is imperfect, so everything, everybody is imperfect. But we are great. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your... <laughs>
with the task of maintenance of international peace and security, DICEC shall be seeking to initiate the establishment of a nuclear weapons free zone in South Asia. The next in the order is United Nations Security Council to ensure prompt and effective action. The Security Council will be consulting on implications of human rights by using drones and robots in armed conflicts. Following the progression, here comes United Nations Human Rights Council. For the promotion and protection of human rights, UNHRC will intend to deliberate on human rights violation of Syrian civilians due to their present living conditions. Then comes all India political parties meet by venturing to simulate political realities of India. AIPPM shall be reviewing the work of Article 370 and shall consult on removal of AFSPA. The committee simulating a cabinet meet is Indo-Pak Peace Summit <laughs> to create more peaceful and healthier bilateral ties. Ministries of India and Pakistan will conduct a special cabinet meet on, uh, to address Kashmir issue. Resembling and doing the work of journalists, last but surely not the least is international press dedicated to promotion and protection of press freedom and improvement of journalism. IP will simulate Russia Today, Dainik Bhaskar, Al Jazeera, and Reuters. Now I would take this opportunity to invite Honorable Chief Guest Dr. Amitav Mukherjee, accompanied by Secretary General Modi School, Model United Nations 2017, Ms. Khushi Mittal, for gavel exchange. Thank you, sir. I would now request the Secretary General, Ms. Khushi Mittal, to present the gavels to our honorable chairs. Firstly, I would like to invite the chair of United Nations General Assembly, Mr. Rudraksh Lakara, alumni of Amity International School, Gurgaon, state level swimmer and basketball player, has a keen interest in social justice reforms, accompanied by the vice chair, Ms. Meghna Das. I would like to invite the chair of United Nations Security Council, Mr. Shair Majumdar, alumni of Vivek High School, graduated from Hindu College, currently working as an editor at Mania Education, accompanied by the vice chair, Ms. Priyanchi Sikhwal. I would like to invite the chair of Indo-Pak Peace Summit, Mr. Mahim Tiwari, alumni of Tagore International School, Vasant Vihar, currently studying BA Political Science at Delhi College of Arts and Commerce, University of Delhi, accompanied by the Vice Chair, Ms. Shivani Rathi. I would now like to invite the chair of all India political parties meet, Mr. Aniket Basu, student of English honors at Delhi College of Arts and Commerce, Delhi University, accompanied by the vice chair, Ms. Avni Bagadia. Now, I would like to invite the chair of United Nations Human Rights Council, Mr. Hitesh Bakshi, alumni of Delhi Public School, Vasant Kunj, studying B.Tech in Electronics and Communication Engineering at Manipal University, Jaipur. Currently working as, uh, works at HD Delhi, accompanied by the vice chair, Ms. Simar Gupta.
With immense pleasure, I invite the Chair of International Press Corps, Ms. Akifa Tanisha. Thank you all the members of executive board. You may now take your seats. Now there will be a video presented. I'm delighted to call upon Ms. Mukushi Mittal, Secretary General, Modi School Model United Nation 2017. She studies humanities as a concerned environmentalist and feminist with views of her own and believes in strength of the latent. Please welcome Ms. Kushi Mittal. Thank you, Bilasha. Delegates and faculty advisors, esteemed board of directors, distinguished chief guest, Mr. Amitav Mukherjee, distinguished guests, President Modi University, Mr. Suresh Advani, and Principal Modi School, Ms. Neeta Sharma. Welcome to Modi School, and welcome to the first session of Modi School Model United Nations 2017. My name is Kushi Mittal, and it is my pleasure and privilege to serve as a Secretary General. The Modi School Model United Nation presents the youth with an opportunity to learn about diplomacy and explore international politics with engaging in skillful discussions. Friends of mine who don't do Model UN often ask me, what is the point of stimulating a failed organization? And whatever the UN strengths and weaknesses so brilliantly summarized earlier by the Honorable Chief Guest, Mr. Amitav Mukherjee, the MSMUN is not about imitating international relationships of the present, but it is about shaping the international relationships of the future. What always strikes me as remarkable about every model UN that I attend is the incredible sense of idealism that you, the delegates, exhibit. And even though this sense of idealism can draw negativity and skepticism, I believe that this is, in fact, one of our greatest strength, because if we cannot imagine an ideal world, we will never be able to progress and solve the issues that our world is facing. The MSMUN is not just an event. It is an experience. It is a hallmark of what young minds can do. You come here as students, but I'm sure you will return back as diplomats. It will not just be about the awards you receive, but about small moments you cherish. I would once again cordially welcome you all to a three-day cutthroat debating, compelling challenges, and an overall conference that will captivate you. With this, I declare the Modi School Model United Nations Conference 2017 Session 1 open.
Thank you, everyone. I request you all to rise for the national anthem. Everyone, please proceed to the school building.